Hey guys, it's Pastor Anna. Hope you're having a great uh, Thursday. Thursday, not Friday. I am going to talk to you guys about the Beatitudes today, and we're going to just focus on the first four. So I'm going to get started and read the Beatitudes, the first four of them in Matthew chapter 5. And it says, Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Okay, so we're just going to focus on those first four for this video. And in another devotional, I'll focus on the remaining four. But we'll just start with these first four right now. Uh, the English Dictionary defines the word beatitude as supreme blessedness. And something that will help us understand why this passage is so important and, in fact, a little bit shocking to the people he's talking to is that Jesus, beginning his sermon this way, is in high contrast to how the law was read to the Israelites. In Deuteronomy 27, verse 26, it says, Cursed is he who does not confirm the words of the law by doing them, and all the people shall say amen. The Jews were very accustomed to hearing, when the law was read to them, hearing, cursed is he who does X, Y, Z, or cursed are they who do X, Y, Z. And then Jesus comes in and he says, blessed is he, or blessed are those. And right off the bat, he has their attention. The Beatitudes model the development of character that a follower of Jesus Christ has. So when we're looking at this, this is how character of a follower of Christ takes root. So we're going to start with the first four, and let's look at the very first one. It goes, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so when you think poor in spirit, you're like, are they sad? Are they, what, what is, you know, what is this? What Jesus is saying here um, is, Blessed are those who have a poverty of spirit, of spiritual resources. So blessed are those who recognize their lack of spiritual resources to save themselves. They recognize their sin and their need for a savior because they cannot take away the, their sins themselves, nor can they save them themselves. They are poor in spirit. They realize that they are poor in spirit. They don't have the resources they need to save themselves. And then it goes on, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we know that the promise that we have is eternity, that ours is the kingdom of heaven. So blessed are those who recognize their sin and their need for a Savior. They can't do it themselves. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. All right, let's look at the second one. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Uh, this verse is often used for funerals or for comfort, comforting someone who has lost a loved one. And yes, we know that the Lord comforts those who are grieving, you know, the loss of a loved one or, or, um, or something. Psalms 34 says that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted. So we know that God is, 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 is close to us in our grieving process. But that's not what this verse is talking about. Um, not that kind of mourning, not that kind of comfort. What is being said here is blessed are those who mourn their sin. Mourning, the expression of deep sorrow. A deep sorrow over our sin, a godly grief. It's true repentance. So blessed are those who have a godly grief over the sin in their lives, for they shall be comforted. And we know that that comfort comes through what Jesus did on the cross. In John 1, 29, it says, The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who mourn. They have a godly grief over their sin, true repentance of sin, for they shall be comforted. Okay, let's look at our next one, the third one. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Okay, so when we think of the word meek, 
in our day and age, we also kind of think of, okay, meek, weak, but that's not what this is. And actually, Jesus is our ultimate example of meekness. Not a doormat, but meek. In Luke 22, when Jesus is in the garden and he's praying to God before his execution, he says, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Jesus is being submissive to the will of God, not my will, but yours. And Jesus demonstrates this submissiveness to God throughout his whole life and in his ministry. Meekness is having a heart positioned in that submissiveness to God's will, putting God's will above your own. The meek shall inherit the earth. We know that we have the promise of eternity, the kingdom of God. But when we submit our will to the will of the fathers, right? When we submit our will, when we look around, when we submit our will to the will of the fathers, we realize that everything that we have on this earth is given to us from God. Everything that comes our way here on earth is grace. And everything that he sends to us is for our joy and ultimately his glory. We get to live life in eternity after this one, but we also realize that we, when we submit our will to his will, we realize that our life here on earth, we get a life here on earth where we can know his comfort, his provision, and in giving up my will for his will, I can know a life that gives me the ultimate freedom to live how I ought to. So we shall inherit the earth, we inherit the kingdom of God, but we shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who position themselves in submission to the Father's will, for they shall inherit the earth. All right, and let's look at our last one. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. One of the definitions of righteousness is utter purity of character. And in 1 Corinthians, it tells us that Jesus is our righteousness. What he did on the cross covers us, and in response to that, we seek to be more like him. We desire the things of God. Blessed are those who desire pure character, not perfect character, because you know, and I know, and the good Lord above knows <laughs> that we are not and never will be on this earth. Perfect. That's why he sent us Jesus. But the desire for pure character, for the right things, the good things, the things of God, the desire to be more like Jesus, we will be satisfied. And ultimately, we are satisfied through Jesus Christ, the shedding of his blood on the cross. He is our righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for pure character, for they shall be satisfied. Now, see the logical progression here. First, we become poor in spirit. All right, we recognize that our, our sin and our need for a savior. And then we mourn. We have a godly grief, a godly repentance over our sin. And then we're meek saying, all right, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. And then we begin to hunger and thirst for the things of God, the things that point us to life. And this, this is the picture of salvation for us. And it is a transformation process for us. Citizens of the kingdom of heaven make a habit. It's not a one done, one time and done thing. No, they make a habit of recognizing our sin, repenting that godly grief, walking in weakness or meekness, saying, not my will, but yours, Father, and then hunger, hungering and thirsting for the for what is good, for righteousness, for God, for Jesus, more of that in our lives. And these things happen again and again in the life of believer. And it is for our good. It is the character building of a believer. Blessed, supremely blessed are you who recognizes your sin, grieves and repents, submits your will to the Father's will. And you who hunger and thirst for the things of God, the kingdom of heaven is yours. 
let me pray for you. Dear God, we thank you so much that you love us, Lord, and that you sent Jesus, God, to come and, and die on the cross for our sins. Lord, help us to always come back to you, Lord. Help us to recognize our sin where we fall short. Lord, lead us to true repentance. Let us always say your will, not mine, God. Your will, your will, Father. And let us always long for what is pure, what is good. Let us long for things that are righteous, Lord. God, bless everyone watching this video. Bless everyone in New Hope. Lord, we love you and we long to be with you. In your name I pray. Amen.